I'm here to talk about Girls Last Tour, an anime series from 2017 that aired on Amazon Prime Video internationally. It's an odd one, a very odd anime series. It's based on a manga that ran in an online magazine starting in 2014 and ending in 2018. I'm not sure if the anime series shares the manga's ending or not. Just don't know. It is sort of a post-apocalyptic slice-of-life comedy, is the best way I can think of to describe it. It focuses on two girls of indeterminate age, seem to be teenagers, who are traveling through this war-torn environment that seems to be completely deserted of humans. It seems like all the people have died in this conflict. They do very rarely come across other people traveling through, uh, but it is you know, 95% of the time, well, 90% of the show is them alone, there are the two of them, traveling through, looking for food on this Jeep, this type of sort of uh, all-terrain vehicle, vehicle. The, it's, and it's, and it's very odd, because the art style is very, has very much kind of these moe blobs, but the environment is this war-torn industrial area. Very odd. The animation itself is simple, but very effective. Uh, because the characters are, the character designs are simplistic, they're able to move them a fair amount. Uh, you know, the detail doesn't get in the way. And there's a fair amount of movement as they're interacting with their environment. Um, you're not going to see a lot of of really highly detailed action sequences in this. There are a few sequences of essentially um, running from danger kind of stuff, but it's definitely not an action series. It's much more of a just living your life going day by day kind of a thing. Despite the concept, it's very laid back in a weird way. Also want to point out the uh, an interesting thing here uh, in terms of the animation the vehicle they're on is CG rendered, and when the characters are on the tank, on the, the, the vehicle, uh, it's not a tank, there's no weapons, um, they are rendered in, usually in CG as it's moving around. And they do an amazing job of matching the CG to the drawn characters. You will not notice the difference when they move. Now, much of the time when you see those movements, they're a little further away from the camera. But there are certainly shots where you can see quite a bit of detail, and you would not tell that that is a CGI rendered version of those characters versus the, the hand-drawn. So, good job there. It is hand-drawn, um, both characters and backgrounds, other than the, the, the CGI vehicles. Really, really impressive work there. <clears throat> the characters are not always on model. Uh, they shift around a fair bit in the show. Because the style is kind of loose, I think that that works. I was never pulled out of the show particularly by that, but occasionally the eye shapes are a little bit weird, um, or the, the body shapes are a little bit odd, so just be aware of that. Um, overall, the direction in terms of the editing and the cinematography is simple but effective, much like the animation. Um, there are certainly, there are Every few episodes, they will spend a lot of time on one sequence, an extended sequence, that is very carefully edited and assembled, um, and where there's a lot of, of cutting between various elements, and it is, is very well done in that sense. Much of the time, it is what I'd say utilitarian editing, where you know, you're cutting back and forth between different characters, there's a lot of interesting use of, um, of camera angle, but nothing experimental, nothing odd, nothing that kind of pulls you out of the story, nothing where, okay, we're, we're going for this weird angle just to be different. Uh, they, they keep it grounded in that, in, in kind of a, in a, uh, an, an effective way for a slice of life show. Um, now, being slice of life, the characters are really important. So you have two main characters, uh, Chi-Chan and Yu, who are shortened versions of their names, and it kind of reminds me a lot of traditional Japanese uh, comedy, especially the two-person comedy style, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, where you have sort of a, a, straight, a straight man and a you know, comedic uh, actor, and they're bouncing off each other with their, their comedy. 
Um, one of the girls is more straight laced and more responsible, while the other is more laid back and uh, you know explores things and gets into trouble and that kind of thing. It's that dynamic in these characters. And I think that they did a, a, an impressive job with this in terms of those are very cliched character types, but they sell those characters in the situation, especially because the uh, laid back character isn't doing things that are really, really stupid. She does things that are a little dangerous because she just doesn't fear things, but it's not, you know, um, it's not crazy suicidal stuff. It's not over the top goofy stuff. Um, in a way that doesn't really make sense for somebody who is surviving in this apocalyptic world. It's just somebody who figures things are generally probably going to work out okay. So that's, that's kind of interesting. And the responsible girl, um, isn't, you know, it's so common for that person to be unfun. And this girl is definitely straight-laced and definitely trying to keep the other girl from getting too... Uh, from, you know, from from going too far, but you know, the personalities aren't extremes. They're just personalities. I think that's the, the big difference. You know, um, it's easy for this to become the odd couple where one person is just a, a slob and one person is extremely organized. This is just you know, two different personalities. And that definitely comes across in the dialogue. Every character has their own way of speaking, their own... Um, their own word choice, how they get things across, how they interact with people is very distinct, which is important in a show with very, very few characters. And I think they, get, they got that right, where you hear a line of dialogue and you think, okay, that sounds like you, that sounds like Cheech on. So good job on there. Uh, now they are exploring this weird kind of, it's not post-apocalyptic in the sense that there's been a nuclear explosion, but it is in the sense that there's this war that seems to have killed everyone you know, on Earth. So the overall believability of the show is a little, it's a tough one. I, I, I can totally see a lot of folks watching this and just not getting it and just being completely turned off by the premise, especially because it has that slice of life dynamic, but also because there's an abstractness to the world. Um, one of the conceits is that because there's been all of this war and all of this industrial building for the war, you, know, you had these, these massive, massive cities that were all turned to war production. Everything is, is about the war. So you have these massive factories that just take you days to travel through in terms of just the scale of them. And so as a result, these facilities are not particularly, you know, visually complex. There's a bunch of pipes and a bunch of machines. So there's this very utilitarian sense to the world, which makes sense but can be a bit of a turnoff, I think, for some people visually. Uh, I think they do a good job of, and, and as they travel through, they, they come to different environments, but they're all still these utilitarian military environments. So good on them there. Um, I listened to the Japanese dub. I'm, as far as I'm aware, there's no English dub of this. And I think they did a fine job of the voices in it. I think they, you know, they fit the characters quite well. Um, they're a little bit squeaky at times. They're a little bit, you know, anime high-pitched character voice at times. Um, but overall, it doesn't get in the way, and I think it, you know, it makes sense for anime series like this. It's kind of the way way these things are. Um, also want to uh, give a shout out to the music. Music is gorgeous, a good variety of tones to it, and but always appropriate to the show. And sometimes appropriate in unexpected ways, where <coughs> they'll be exploring this complex environment and this kind of dangerous environment but the music will be light toned and kind of communicates to you that this isn't this is not as dangerous as it appears they are scared but you shouldn't be and i really like that and other times when the music is more dark and scary so good on them there definitely a, you know uh, instrumental sort of a, a score you know a uh, an orchestral kind of a score but toned down and appropriate which is interesting because for a show like this, you could do something very, very weird and industrial. You could use electronic music. Uh, you could go very spare because everything else is very spare. But they went with a more lush soundtrack, which I think um, helps bring the viewer in a little bit, right? I think if it did that, the show would feel sparse. It would feel um, a little bit off-putting. 
And I think that helps the viewer to feel a little bit more reassured, especially with the concept of like, these characters could die at any time. I mean, it's very, it'd be very easy for them in these environments to be, you know, killed off. So FYI. Um, overall, this is a show with a very weird vibe. On the one hand, it is that they are trying to survive in, a, in this wasteland. On the other hand, much of the show is about them having little arguments and bonking each other on the head and, you know, arguing over rations and one of the girls likes to eat a lot and all that kind of, all the sort of normal slice of life stuff you get in a slice of life anime series is in here. So this is not going to be a show that is, you're not necessarily going to just love, and it's not necessarily a show, importantly, that your friends are necessarily going to love. You know, you may know folks who are like, oh, I think they'll like this. Good chance this might not fire on all cylinders for them, so be aware of that. I should also point out, there are some more serious moments in the show. Uh, there are sequences that are philosophical, that are thoughtful and relatively deep. So that is in there if you're looking for that as well. Uh, just kind of few and far between. So be aware of that. That is Girls' Last Tour. It is, I believe, 12 episodes uh, available out there, as I said, on Amazon Prime Video, at least, as of this recording. And if that, that sounds interesting to you, I, it is certainly an unusual show that I think you will find interesting.